Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Jordan Love, Tough L versus the Raiders. We are diving in deep. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig the YouTube channel, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of nuance, detail about not only the quarterback position, but offensive and defensive football. If you're interested, Hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the video description. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Jordan Love Week 5 Tough L for the Packers. Right here, third and three. This looks like he's going to start up top with his read. It's not there. Panic and chuck something late down the middle of the field. That very easily could have been an interception. What I would classify as a turnover-worthy play, perhaps you would classify it as interceptable. Regardless, it's muddy, it's messy versus drop eight, and it's basically what I would classify as a panic chuck. Now, you combine that with what I would say is poor spacing up top. Look at the route distribution up top. That can't be right. Okay, so I would guess that one or both of the players up top, most likely one, didn't do the correct route. So if this is the route, and we're going to come up here and try to go quick out, if it's supposed to be quick out, it's probably supposed to be stick. Okay, if it's supposed to be flat here by the tight end, if he's supposed to be tight end it's to the flat, then it's probably supposed to be stick here. So someone's in the wrong. Okay, then you combine that with what looks like almost like a clear and an in down here to the bottom. Now, because it's drop eight and he's got all sorts of time, this in is probably there. Now, again, it's very easy for me, comfortable in my house, nice chair, marker, clicker, to say, yeah, just sit back there and throw the end to the backside because you've got all day. Much more difficult in the pocket. So the first part is just acknowledging the fact the spacing up top, that ain't it. Okay. Now it's third and three. No panic. There's no reason to chuck that ball late down the middle like that. I see what he sees as far as the slot running with what is essentially the Mike linebacker type. Now, if you throw a line drive right at him, back shoulder, okay. But late like this and high, and like a grenade, very easily could have been picked. And again, you can see the end to the bottom as it comes open. So just get through the read. No up top, there's a mistake, mental error. Down here to the bottom, in. No, don't like it. Get it to the check down, to the bottom. You know, punting after a third down completion is okay. And the back probably gets a first down if you throw it to the check down. Make somebody miss, collision somebody, first down. Again, easy for me to see, easy for us to see you know, days later on the film, but you can see here the combination of someone wrong the ran, ran the wrong route and we panic chuck a ball late down the middle. Not good enough. Next one here, a really nice run from Jordan Love. This comes off what I'm going to call a naked keeper to his left. I like the way that they attack the edge here as well, going away from Crosby. Love that as well. Jordan Love showing off some speed, some running skills right there. Almost takes that thing even farther, gets a little heel click to be able to get taken down, but that's a huge chunk. Watch the motion come back and cut the edge, chop, or try to cut the edge, but then this ability to get downhill, make somebody miss, and I mean, just barely gets his heel clicked right there. That's a really a thing of beauty. Now, scheme-wise, so what I'm saying here is that I really like the way that we're being a little bit unique as far as how we're attacking this edge player. So we're gonna motion, and then we're gonna come back and try to chop this edge player. So we protect ourselves when we come out here to the edge. We don't have somebody in our face. That is paired with, we've seen a lot of teams this year do this where the person who shows up in the flat is coming from the other side. So you really have to come right down the line, like down the heels. Now, what does that do? That exposes you potentially to being rerouted or jacked here. So if anybody touches you or jacks you, it's gonna jack with the timing of that. That's why in the past for so long, we've seen that, that hide or sneak flat coming from behind the line of scrimmage because no one will usually hit you from there. Then that is co combined with the over. Both the flat and the over aren't there. I think it's with a comeback too. Not there, not there. Jordan Love makes a really good decision, a clean decision, 
get out, get some positive yardage, and he shows off his athleticism. So again, watch that flat from the bottom, from the inline tight end, right there, that collision. Over is not there, get vertical. Get vertical, and I mean, whoo! Right, so he might click his own feet, to be honest with you. That could have been a big time run out the back door right there. That's a hell of a job. I really like moving the launch point. I love doing that away from 98 as well. And don't let that guy wreck the game. Get downhill. Go be yourself. Be athletic. It's a nice addition to this offense right there. Next one here, third and 11. Okay, now there's no good play for third and 11. That's the first part. We can see them looking like they're getting into whatever play that they want. This to me is a spear or arrow screen to the back. I love the fact that it's out of quads. This formation looks like what a lot of teams in the league do with double chip where they chip the ends. The problem here is that the back runs into Crosby. So this play has got a chance. Third and 11, there's no good play. There really is. I want to make sure I'm, I emphasize that. There is no good play. You might convert them every once in a while, but you're in a tough spot. So this play for me is this right here, quads, four eligibles to this side. He's going to run a flat, and then these three guys are all going to block. So it's just a math thing. Do we have, are there three defenders out there? Can we block them? Does it give us a chance to get 11 yards better than like ripping a slant or an in or an out or a comeback? It also gets the ball out of your hands quickly, so you don't have to deal with this guy wrecking the game. Okay, but the problem is here is this formation looks like double chip. What a lot of teams will do when well, they'll put these guys here, they will chip the ends and then get into a check down. Chip the ends and get into the check down. Well, he knows this. The back has to know this as well, and he has to be ready to avoid this. So you can't get chipped here. You got to go. This is a speed thing. You got to get out there. And because he's in an 11 technique there, inside joke, you're welcome for the one person who gets that. But they're going to run into each other. And that collision, just that lack of detail in the execution jacks this play. Because do the math up top. They're just rolling to three cloud up top. We've got three over three. We're going to have a chance there. Right? The, the guys who are going to make that tackle are going to be inside the hash right there. So we've got a great opportunity, but we can't get out. Crosby wrecks it by accident right there, and we can't even hook it up with a completion. So, you know, it's one of those things for me, certainly a conservative call. I don't dislike the call. I dislike the execution. And it looks like the back is surprised. Like, what? He hit me? Yeah, he expects to get chipped when you line up like this. Tough. Rough one. This next one is just a brutal interception. This looks like play action drift post down here to the number two. And it really looks like Jordan Love just doesn't see anybody on the field. I mean, I think multiple people probably picked this off, which is never a great thing to say. He certainly doesn't see 41 because he throws it right to his face. I mean, that is, that, <laughs> that's as bad of a pick as, as you'll see. And you hope that 88 just blocked his view. But, I mean, the other linebacker makes a play on that ball too, right? I mean, that is that looks like one of those throws where you tell the scout team quarterback, hey, uh, throw an interception right here. I want to see what you know it looks like for us to convoy block and go get a touchdown. I mean, that is, that's bad ball. There is no excuse other than the fact that I just didn't see it. And didn't see it doesn't work very often in the league. Not for, certainly not for very long. Again, I... Lots of teams run iterations of what I'm going to classify this as a drift post. I've heard it referred to as a slim, as a whatever. And there's the post. And it gives, in my book, a lot of freedom as far as the angle that you can come in here with. But for my money, you know, we're trying to get these guys to step up here. And you have to be able to at least see them. I mean, I think that this defender probably gets his hand on it too. And it hits him in the face. I mean, it's, it's one of those ones where... I watch it a few times and I'm just like, I don't know what he thought he saw. He obviously doesn't see the guy he throws it to in the face. That is a gift to get the ball inside the 10 off that. My goodness. Just nowhere near good enough. And it's really hard to win games at any level, turning it over like this, this easily. I mean, that is a gift. 41 is just Christmas come early. He was getting gifts all night. My goodness. Next one here, another third and 11, another rough situation to try to get a first down in. Now, this time, I think I'd be a little bit more critical of just 
there's no option to get a first down here. And I'm not saying you're going to get a lot of options. We've already talked about how it's a rough spot to be in. But for me, Jordan Love, there's nothing you can do here than throw the check down. Just throw the check down. That's exactly what he does. Punting after a third down completion is okay. On to the next. Now, that being said, we can at least be critical and look critically at the concept of what the hell they're asking him to do. This looks like it's almost like a crummy or double move comeback. Takes forever. Never going to be there. This looks like some sort of like crosser. Takes forever. Never going to be there. This looks like some sort of just like go. I mean, there's no options. What do you what do you want him to do? Now, I'm not saying again that there's a lot of great options, but for instance, what I would want to see is some sort of potentially switch release, some sort of someone at the sticks breaking off, giving us an opportunity for a first down. You know, these are no one's winning here. No one, the timing of this is not anywhere good enough. We've already talked about this formation as well, as far as the double chip. So they come up here and you're going to chip the ends. Great. Okay. I'll, I'll, fine. I love it. Well, you have to chip them, especially if this is the guy we're doing it for. So if we're doing it for this and our eyes are at the ball for some reason, because we don't know the snap count or we, it's silent, you got to watch it. You can't be late off the ball to give your chip. I mean, it's just like little things like that that are missing in this offense make it really hard to be successful. I mean, look at the tight end up top. Oh, my. Help us out. A right tackle does a good job. He gets rewarded with a completion, which is like the double sin. But, I mean, there's no good options. Third and 11, we're behind the sticks. We have no opportunity to win down the field. Just get a completion, get to the sideline, and we'll try again next time. Next one here, third and five. If I'm going to be critical of the play calling, and we're going to be critical of the play calling on this channel, I'm also going to recognize the ones that I like. To me, this is zone, read, triple. Just how they get there is what I'm used to calling a spear or an arrow screen to your boy 88. Now, again, this doesn't get a first down, but it allows them to have a fourth and manageable, which they do get. Okay, so this is what I would want to see more from for Jordan Love. Like, this is a simple RPO. Again, if you can't block him, read him. That's not like a new football idea, but it works. So we're going to read Crosby. We're going to run this flat here, and then we're going to have the number one block MDM. MDM just means most dangerous man. So the free runner, or the person who's free to make this tackle is right here. And he makes a nice play. Good for him. But we've got the opportunity to run it okay, with some iteration of zone, to run it with the quarterback if it's there, or to throw it. That's the triple option. So when I say spread triple, we've got the dive, the quarterback run, and the pitch. Just getting there different ways. And I love this as a third medium call because especially in this kind of gray area where, hey, are you going to go for it on fourth? If you are, this is the type of stuff I want to see. Great horizontal stretch. Nice kind of off-platform flick from Love right on him. Beautiful throw. This is the Jordan Love that I think can excel in the league. You just have to – this has to be called more for me. This can't be like a one-off or once-a-half call. Right on cue, touchdown run. Same exact play, except now we're running it to the bottom. Spread triple. Reed Crosby, he can't do it. But this is what Jordan Love brings to the table that Green Bay probably hasn't seen as far as he's got the ability to run it here. You can see him take off and run this thing if, you, if he were to keep it. Get downhill. So you've got the triple element of dive quarterback pitch. We've already shown that we can do this play. We called it on third down. Now we're calling it inside the 10. And I think it's just a great thing that they need to do more of so can't block him read him here's the pitch right here's the zone where you actually get the touchdown run we got the quarterback potentially to be able to run it as well so it's kind of one two three and it just puts significant stress on the defense and you don't have to block their best player like this is not rocket science Nice job, Green Bay. Nice touchdown run. Excellent execution from Love. We've seen him work the pitch. We've seen him work the dive. Just a really nice job. Look at those double teams up front. Two double teams. Inside zone. Set it. Get vertical. Grab your feet. Touchdown. Let's go. Next one here. Third and four. Okay, now, if you're listening to this in like a public space where other people can hear your audio, this is where you want to go earmuffs. Okay, just hit mute. I'll give you a second. Okay, this is an earmuff situation. This is sprint left option. This play is not fucking good enough anymore in the league. Don't want to see it from a static formation ever again. 
yet we'll see it all the time. It's so bad on so many fucking levels. I'm about to come out of my skin and pull a James Franklin here with this thing. This is just disgusting. Not only is it a terrible concept, but it's executed poorly. It's designed poorly. No one wins, and you've only got two options on third and four with half the field. Now, the only good thing is that you're putting like four dudes on Crosby. But besides for that, this is a dumpster fire and a white flag for me from whoever's calling the place. And I, I mean, I thought LaFleur was in his bag early in the season. This is not it. Okay, so what is sprint left option as I lose my mind? It is a flat, and right here it's going to be a whip on the back. So you come in, and then you come out. Think uh, Dwight Clark, the catch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do yourself a favor and Google it. The read here is one to two to the back pylon. And then the other part about this play, which is actually my favorite part of this play, is the number three here is he doesn't get it. He turns up, and then he's at the front pylon for three. Okay, so this is the play. It was good in 1981. It's not good enough anymore. If you have to run this play, at least motion or stack the receivers or try to get a rub. Okay, that would be how I would suggest it. The other thing here is that if you're going to run this here, you got to get your feet in the end zone. You can't run this at the two on third and four. Even if you caught it, it wouldn't be a first down. The other thing here is when we get up to the back line, you have to know they're going to try to push you out. So this corner right here is going to rock, get get into this cat and bench press him out of bounds. This place sucks. Look at it. What do you want Jordan Love to do? The flat is blanketed. It's also a basically no yard flat. He runs that at the line of scrimmage. Look at the route, the whip up top. Watch him get pushed out of bounds. That's a flag dog. That's illegal contact past five yards. The ref sees it. Watch the ref on the left corner of the end zone. He throws his hat for a guy out of bounds, but it, you're not allowed to bench press people 15 yards downfield. No good options. Now you can see the third option. He tries to get to that front pylon at the bottom, but Jordan Love doesn't help himself because he kind of continues to push the sink, stay on the run, runs into the edge, and has to throw it away. The throwaway is the best part. It's a disaster. The play is terrible. If you call plays, throw it out. I don't want to see it in the plan. Don't bring it around me. It reeks. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member. Link is in the video description. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. RPOs, we talk about in this video. Tempo, pass protection, we talk about in this video. How to beat every coverage, the best selling course, we talk about in this video. We even have an entire offensive system and structure available for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those courses, hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have various free resources available, all linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here. Again, if we're going to be critical, we're also going to show what I think are well-constructed plays. This is a post and a big curl. I love taking a shot down the field. I think Jordan Love has a live arm. I also think that he doesn't put it where he wants to very often deep down the field. This is a big-time throw. I mean, he's throwing that thing, what, 60-ish yards in the air? It's just not where he wants it to be. So it's a big-time quarters beater for me. So anytime you catch what I'm going to call a big post up top, so this big post, okay, versus what I'm going to call some iteration of quarters up top and half down here to the bottom. Down here to the bottom, we're going to get this like deep curl. Okay, this, this post is getting thrown for me. I love it. I talk a lot about whatever their angles are, okay? I don't, I'm not in their room. I don't know what their landmarks are. I think oftentimes you can say the near upright, so what does that mean? That means the goalpost upright, way down on the other goalpost. That's your aiming point. Like we want to throw that thing. He wants to hit his head on the crossbar corner. It can be the near hash, you know, at 50 yards down the field, whatever the landmark is. What you can't do is what Jordan Love does here is once he sets this land, once he sets his line on the post, you do not want to throw it over here. You want to miss on this side 
so that it's an easier kind of curl into it as opposed to, you know, like a Willie Mays Hayes type thing where we're like going this way. That's a hell of a lot harder over the shoulder bucket catch. So to me, he's missing it. I get it. It's 60 ish yards down the field, but give us a chance. Give us a chance. I think he could help himself also by chopping his footwork a little bit. He's so like long and duh, 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 duh. now this thing has to be thrown forever. I mean, the safety gets lost. The safety doesn't even believe it's going to be thrown up there. Look at him turn around. He doesn't know where the hell he is. The ball is just on the outside as opposed to carving it closer towards the hash. So if that thing was on the hash, I think it's got an opportunity for a massive play. And I love the aggressiveness here. I love the play action, throwing it down the field. He just misses it. Next one here, third and seven, third and medium. We're going to run a speed out down here to the bottom. Excellent timing, nice accuracy, anticipation on the body, on the break, first down. Lots to like. Third and seven, much more manageable than third and forever, third and 11s. Again, the timing, the anticipation. I like the play calling. Just a speed out down here to the bottom. Three no hitch. Look at him. Jordan Love's already separated right there. The speed out to the bottom is not out of the break yet. The ball's right on him. It's halfway to him. Beautiful. This is excellent timing. Again, our tight end is doing whatever our tight end is trying to do with Crosby. Flopping around. That's a great job. I love the timing of it. The rhythm. The ball's getting out quickly. One, two, three. Boom. Ball's out. Leaves the screen. Fastball. First down. Let's go. Next one here. Third and four. We're going to work the stick down here to the bottom to the tight end. Into a cloud corner. Nice must outside release by the number one. Nice job by the tight end finding space, running away from him. It's not an easy throw, but Jordan Love kind of finds an angle here to be able to get this thing in there. A little movement off the spot. This is a nice conversion on third and four. So what is this play at the bottom of the screen? This is just stick to me. And so this come up by the number two, and then we're going to turn out past the sticks. It's third and four, so you can get past the sticks. It's often tethered to what I'm used to calling a must outside release go. So he must go outside because you want that corner to turn this way towards the sideline and push him towards the sideline to create this window. And again, even when they match to it right like this and it's a tight throw, Jordan Love's able to kind of buy enough time here to be able to throw it. Now that is the good part. The bad part of this play is whatever the spacing is over here. Like we got dudes throwing up mailboxes. We got guys in kind of the same lane for the seam or the middle field read part of this. Like whatever this is, you know, this is just not NFL spacing. So yes, it works out, but when you look at the entire picture, it continues to look like there's a lack of detail in whatever they're doing in the dropback game. Again, that that's not NFL spacing up top. It just isn't. Well, one more time, just understand that you know having guys run like this. Now maybe the number three just throws up the mailbox and like Travis Kelsey's that thing. It's supposed to be something else. But if he, if he were to go to the backside, there's no good options. Again, they're hitting him with drop eight. It's a nice job by Jordan Love knowing he's got a little bit of time, buy some time, get a completion, third and four, let's go. Again, I like the subtle movement here. He doesn't panic. He doesn't get off of him. He knows he's got him by structure. Little arm angle, sidearm, drop it down, first down. Next one here, another tough interception. This one to the bottom on what I'm going to call like a deep hook or curl. Play action, gift to dark visor. I mean, it's tough. It's hard for me to put this on Jordan Love because I think you have to anticipate your guys winning at the top of these routes. And I can also say, for me, this is not my favorite type of route if we're going to face what I'm going to call like some iteration of brackets. So it's really mirrored concepts on both sides or the outcome is mirrored. You don't know if these are like post to you can't type routes. But what ends up being, you know, this idea of and then back curl or deep hook. And when I say post to you can't, sometimes I'll call these like post reads. And if you can post it, post it. Otherwise, set it down. But it ends up being both kind of deep curls or hooks. Well, if you watch this corner at the bottom, he's actually getting in and out of this break before the wide receiver. Now, he can do that because they're essentially two over one. So there's two up here or down here, I should say. And then there are two up here because we're only getting two people out. Right? You've got these corners. So it's essentially two-on-one, two-on-one. Allows these guys to play freer. This is actually a hell of a play from the corner, too. I'll slow it down at the very top of this thing. But 
I mean, the only thing you could really say to Jordan Love is, hey, protect the play caller by checking it down. Because watch this corner at the bottom. That corner is breaking right there. He's coming out of the hook before the wide receiver. Now, you'd love nine to come right back to the quarterback and fight through this and not allow this thing to get tipped like this. But, I mean, that's just a hell of a play from the corner. If you were to go up top, it's two-on-one again. I mean, sure, it's easy in hindsight to say just check it down or it's covered, but I think you got to trust your guys to win here. And or I personally would love to see other things called. Okay, so other things called. What are other things? Other things are can be, because it's not good enough sometimes to just say, just do call something else. Yeah, no shit. I got you. We could go crosser, post. We could go deep out like seven with a crosser. We could go post corner with a crosser. We could go stutter go both sides. I mean, there's so many different iterations. You could go post like B or deep flag. I mean, there's what do you want to do to do, to do double curl to me versus this? It's worth acknowledging the fact that this feels like there are guardrails on some of these throws that aren't giving us chances to separate or win or have big plays. That being said, I've also shown throws down the field that we've just missed. So when it's not going good, it's not going good. And right here, it's not going great. You would love to say, hey, 10, don't force it. If you feel like the corner can make a play on it, just get it down. We'll live to fight another day. Easier said than done. Everybody gets some blame on that one for me. Next one here, one of my favorite plays of the night. Jordan Love giving a straight arm to the probably the best player out there, Max Crosby, coming all the way across, just Mad Max effort right to the face. Love to see defensive guys try to complain about getting straight arm to the face. This is pretty special from a quarterback. Max Crosby coming all the way across the field. Boom, get off me, dog. <laughs> Look at that straight arm. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's go. That is awesome. From the other angle here, we'll show it too, just for fun. Every angle for this one. Max Crosby, though, he's the right defensive end. He's head up on the sniffer right there. Look at the great effort coming all the way down the line. Dude's a bat out of hell, but that is a face mask to the face. That is a straight arm to the face. Boom. Little head knockback right there. Jab. Straight right. <laughs> that was awesome. I will say I don't love the fact that like no one reacts on the sideline. Maybe they're just not watching the game. But that was a hell of a play. My goodness. I mean, nobody reacts. One guy, backup tight end. Just just naked keeper to the left again. I like what they were doing as far as having that guy come across and try to chop him. Looks like they actually call a penalty on it right here. But that's a hell of a straight arm. I mean, that is a ridiculous straight arm for anyone let alone a quarterback, to be able to put down one of the best players in the league, in my opinion, at the defensive line. Watch this thing. Head knockback. Dunk. Woo! <laughs> Slow it down. Boom! Oh, I'm all about it. Let's go. Next one here, third and seven. I really like this call. I like the decision to throw it. I like everything but the deep ball accuracy. So for me here, the post is there. It's a quarters beater. We've got an iteration of quarters. We just don't give our wide receiver a chance on this post again. Now, this time he misses it to the inside, which to me is a better miss, but it's still a miss. And so we can say, hey, I really like this call. I like the aggressiveness. I like the decision. But at some point, we've got to execute some of these deep ball throws. And so for me, what is this play? This play is we are going to get a post right here. Big boy post. We are going to pair it with some iteration of a corner or a sail. Is going to go inside the flat defender and then come out like this. It's almost always paired with something in the flat. So you get this kind of like three-layer cake. So when you catch quarters, you're going to be looking right here at this safety. If this safety stays flat-footed or down at all, this post is a go. Let it rip. Okay, now, if you didn't like this post, this sail is going to be a tough one for me too because this flat defender does a good job of getting depth. You know, there's no easy throws here. It's third down in the league. You're not going to get easy throws. But if you, again, and I feel like, honestly, I'm getting tired of myself saying it, but this post, 
at least he misses it this way this time. Now, you, you can't miss it so far that the guy doesn't have a chance to catch it. So you've got to be somewhere in between where he can miss it this way and still get to it. You can't throw it so far he can never get to it. The miss radius has got to be just tighter on these deep throws. The other part about this, and this is not D-line school, but because it's quarterback school and we talk about game wreckers, uh, if you're a defensive end or defensive lineman or defensive coach and your guy, your beast is getting chipped like this, what are great ways to get away from it? Is to run games inside. So we run some iteration of like a little pirate here, and then he now takes his talents inside, and this chip essentially is just wasting a player because he doesn't chip anybody. So lots of moving parts here. First thing, let's watch Crosby on that little stunt. So to get away from the chip, there it is, right? He's, now he's going to go hit the quarterback. Now we're going to watch the safety at the bottom of the screen, pink shoes, pink gloves. As soon as he settles right there, you can see him kind of settling right there. I'm throwing the post. I love it. Now you just have to go. First of all, nine has to run as hard as he can, which I'm not sure he is. Right there, it looks like he kind of turns it down a tick for me. But then we just got to give him a chance, man. No more foul balls on these long post throws. Give him a chance. Good things happen. Penalties, big completions. Again, watch that stunt on the right. Tight end chip to no one. Big hit. Can't get through it. Nice job turning down from 98 as well. Everything here except the final ball location on some of these deep post throws. Next one here, interception, last play for the pack here. Third and 10, down four. You got one timeout left. Okay, so you don't have to chuck it up here, but eventually you're going to have to throw it up. So, you know, a one-on-one -on -one opportunity down the field, in, in theory, not the worst thing in the world for me. We're going to get outside the pocket. We get a mailbox from nine. You know, it's a great play from the corner. It really is a recovery play to go up and make that play, especially for the size of that cat. But I think Jordan Love is really going to be kicking himself on this one because he's got that crosser. He just kind of get he gets locked in, and he's a tick late seeing that thing pop open. Now, I personally would also love to see Nine be a lot more violent at that opportunity to go up there and catch it or at least not let his guy catch it. You see Nine at the top of the screen, mailbox up, got him right there. Okay, but we're already on the move. Now the corner's in recovery mode. Jordan sees it here. He just lets that thing go, you know, 10 yards short. But if, you, if you're going to throw it, you know, in stride, you're going to throw him into the front row. So the timing of this thing is all jacked. So he thinks he's got it. And I'm not mad at him for thinking that he's got it here. He just doesn't throw it where he wants. So we're running by him, right? Like he's by him. He's behind him. If you throw that thing on a laser... Right here, you're maybe getting a chance for a borderline walk-off. Okay, now the thing that's sickening is that you throw it where you don't want to, right? Like he underthrows it, the corner makes a hell of a play, great. And of course, when you turn on the film, you also see that this crosser probably would have been a massive gain too. Not an easy throw on the run, but probably an easier throw. So it's just a combination of all those things. I, I think he just misses the throw again, deep down the field. And, you know, maybe an easier throw is to this crosser once you get outside the pocket. I think at the end of the day, he just doesn't put it where he wants. It's a tick late. Again, it's just all of those things and the things are the same on all of these deep throws down the field. We're just not putting the ball where we want. The timing looks a little bit jacked. We're trying to do a little bit too much out of structure right here. Again, you can see that crosser coming across at the top of the screen right to left, right? You know, that, that's probably an easier throw. Again, hindsight, really easy. Thanks, Captain. It's also a hell of a play by the corner. They made a play. We didn't make enough. That's an L. So that is a wrap. Jordan Love, tough L, on the road, prime time versus the Raiders. You know, I, I feel like there's a lot of blame to go around. I feel like Jordan Love certainly not playing his best football, even not playing the best football we've seen him play in the short, small sample size we have on him. For me, Jordan Love, really spraying some deep ball opportunities. I felt like there were some aggressive shots there to be had and be played and be made. We just missed them. And we're missing them in lots of different ways. So it starts to being like a the spray radius thing for me just looks like it's magnified for Jordan Love down the field. Certainly got the arm to make those throws, but it's the precision and the consistency of the ball placement that just looks erratic at the moment. I think when you couple that with what I would put kindly as like, guardrail play calling, meaning that we're 
maybe not as aggressive, not as dynamic on the perimeter as far as what we're maybe asking some of those guys to do. can think of that earmuff situation on the third down inside the 10. Those types of things for me, you know, it's hard to be successful playing quarterback when you're not really given the full complement of what's available in a modern offense nowadays. And you're doing kind of dated stuff, in my opinion. Another one of those interceptions on those like double curls, double hooks, that's tough. There's better stuff than that. We don't have to do stuff like that. That to me is putting guardrails on a quarterback to say, hey, this is really simple. Please don't screw this up. And then we screw it up regardless. So that's tough. I think when you combine that with the conservative-ish play calling with some of the stuff, I think that there's fair criticism all the way around. And that's really the truth of it. And Crosby's a hell of a player and will disrupt a lot of things. But man, you know, we'll see what this thing looks like. It's not going to be easy. It never was going to be easy to transition away from Aaron Rodgers, but I think Jordan Love certainly has a skill set that you can build around. We'll just see if the Packers and LaFleur can find a way to do it a little bit more consistently. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.